The architect behind Janet Jackson's legendary moves from her unforgettable video for If to the celebrated tour for the Velvet Rope, Tina Landon is one of the most iconic choreographers ever to make her mark on the industry. After getting her start as a featured dancer in Michael Jackson's music video for Smooth Criminal, she quickly became a choreographer who's a brand unto herself. Winner of two MTV Video Music Awards for Best Choreography and nominated for seven more, she's worked with an incredible array of artists, ranging from Ricky Martin, Willow Smith, and Maya to Motley Crue and Aerosmith. Tina is the proud recipient of an Alma Award for Achievement in Choreography that was presented to her by JLo herself. We're thrilled to have her with us on the show today. I am your host, Galen Hooks. Tina, thanks for joining me. Thank you, it's my pleasure. So you're somebody that I have never heard the words icon and legend thrown around so much with somebody's name. You are an icon and a legend, <laughs> but I want to talk to you about you as a person too. So when you were growing up in Lancaster, how did dancing come into the picture? Uh, well, actually, my mom was the one who put my, myself, my brother and sister into dance. I started when I was two, so it wasn't like I had a choice. She probably just needed an hour of <laughs> silence in the house. And you know, it's really interesting because it was just something that became my life after a while. And I remember one time, I don't know, I was complaining about something. I think I was like in eighth grade. And I had a friend go, well, why don't you just quit then if you don't want to do it? And I, I, I thought for a second, like, that's not an option. Hmm. It, just, it just wasn't. It was, it was like brushing your teeth. You can't, you know, yeah. I complain all the time, but I'm not going to stop brushing my teeth. <laughs> And it was just, it was like, it was just like a weird thing that kind of clicked and never, never left me that why would I ever stop dancing? Mm -hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> but your family, I mean, like so many dancers, their parents just think, oh, dancing's a hobby. And of course, like when you're a little girl like that, it's especially just a hobby. You're just there for well, recreation. Well, especially when you've grown up in Lancaster, California, yeah. <laughs> that's an hour away from anything. It's just yeah. desert in between Lancaster and Los Angeles. So Los Angeles, I may as well have been going to New York. It was uh, a yeah. whole different world. What gave you the drive to keep showing your parents, this isn't just a hobby. I want to go to LA. I want to do this. Um, one of my dance teachers at the time, it was like this, this weird thing. She heard about this show, and this is the time they were looking for break dancers, and I dabbled in it a little. I was Ooh, really bad. No, I was awful. I want to see that. I was awful. <laughs> <laughs> but at the time, there weren't girls doing it. There, you know, there were uh -huh. no beat freaks. There were yeah. no really cool girl groups or crews or any of that. Cool. And uh, I ended up getting the job, and it was kind of like, wait, I could get paid for this? I can get paid for doing something that I love that... I just do every year just to dance at the mm -hmm. fairgrounds. <laughs> and so it was something that I started, I really thought about. And when you come from a family that doesn't understand that, you know, with my dad, who was, you go to school, you get a degree, you get a job. I had to put a plan together for my dad before I even approached him when I decided this is, this is really what I want to do. I wrote on a piece of paper what it was going to cost me, what I could afford. I was already working two jobs at two different dance studios and what I was going to need as support from him. And knowing my dad, it's like as long as I had some plan, he was always gonna go an extra mile. Mm -hmm. So when I said six months, he goes, okay, well, we'll try it for a year. And I went, really? Wow. And that's kind of what catapulted me out on my own, my own apartment and everything. Having secured her family's blessing, Tina moved to Los Angeles and started her career as a professional dancer. Before long, she found herself taking her moves out of the studio and onto the court. It was her experiences as a Laker girl that led to two of the most influential friendships in her life. One with Paula Abdul, the other with Janet Jackson. I mean, you did, you did enjoy certain success as a dancer. You were a Laker girl with Paula Abdul. Yeah. During those times, that's amazing, but that actually led to you working with Janet, right? Paul and I met actually before Laker Girls. We used to teach summer camps together. Wow. It's just, yeah, it was very random. We kind of knew each other, but not really. Mm -hmm. And then I became a Laker girl, and then we became more friends. And then she ended up calling me for the What Have You Done For Me Lately video. Wow. And at that time, Janet was, I mean, everyone knew the Jacksons, everyone knew Michael, and Janet was still, you know, kind of under the radar, uh -huh. but still like, oh my God, yes, wow. thank you. I'll be there when, just, you know. So that was, that was how you got started working with Janet. Obviously, you've done incredible stuff for her. And I want to talk to you about the Velvet Rope Tour. Because you can't talk to you without talking about the, about the Velvet Rope <laughs> Tour. I mean, when it, when it first aired, I would go <laughs> to dancers' houses. And every place I went, it was playing. It was like it was just looping in everybody's house. And I've heard you say that it's your baby. How so? I think because, you know, I had worked with Janet for so long. It was finally one of those things that I, I knew her so well. I just pulled out all the stuff. She just let me kind of have free reign and and we had that relationship where, like, oh, Janet, you know, for, for you, this is, I have this idea, this is what we should do. And I got to be there from the very first note 
of the song being developed. I was wow. in Minneapolis with her. And for someone like me, like I love to live with it. I, I, I don't like to do things on the fly. I don't like to do things quickly. I like to listen over and over and over until the song kind of gives me the story that I'm looking for so that I know this is the feeling of it. This is what I want to do. This is the way the song looks in my head mm -hmm. and this is how I want to present it. What are some of you, the things that you're most proud of in that show? It was probably the way that everything just kind of all came together. You know, being able to not only be there at the, the birth of the record, but to also have the right dancers to make everything come to life and dancers that I could count on because we had we had such a variety that I could, you know, we had really strong hip hop, we had really strong technical dancers. So for me, it was like there were, there were, I had no restraints. I could do anything I wanted creatively. So I felt like everything flowed. And I just, I just also loved probably every song on that record, <laughs> which anyone knows as a choreographer, it's like your dream to be in love with the music first because then it all, that's where everything comes from. Yeah, those are all elements that just, you must have been in heaven. At the time, I no, I wasn't in heaven. <laughs> because it's a different thing, you know, when, you, when you're yes. in it yeah. and you've got X amount of time to get things done. So no, at that time, <laughs> in the process, I was not in heaven. Uh -huh. And it probably wasn't for until the tour was over and mm -hmm. I watched it actually for the first time on oh. video and I kind of went, oh, okay. Having learned the value of perspective following the Velvet Rope Tour, Tina discovered an entirely new approach to her craft. She put her experience with Janet to work, creating a philosophy based around choreographing an artist as opposed to choreographing moves. I mean, your, your approach to choreography in general is uh, you like to customize things to the artist, make sure nobody looks the same. It's all about what they're trying to say with their music. How do you prep for just when you're choreographing for somebody? How do you prep so that you have that customized uh, product that you're putting on them. I really just try to get the gist of who the artist is and they're all different. They're all different people with different beliefs, different backgrounds, mm -hmm. and I think they all speak that through their music. So there's no way on earth that I would try to choreograph something for Rihanna that I choreograph for Janet. One, just physically, mm -hmm. it doesn't work. I mean, you know, one's 5'3", one's 5'9". Mm -hmm. Janet's laid back, but she's a firecracker on stage. Rihanna's laid back, and she's laid back on stage. So you kind of have to take all that into it. And, and when they're really great artists, it's all present in their music. You just have to listen. The time and the organization that's gone, that goes into performances nowadays is such a fraction of what it used to be. So how do yeah. you deal with that, having come from an era where you had ample time to really develop something? It's, it's beyond frustrating. It really is, because You've got high caliber artists on a high caliber show and you want, you know, and it's not even an ego thing. It's not about your work. You want the best performance mm -hmm. you can for the person that's paying you. <laughs> Unfortunately, I, I think that people are getting used to seeing crap yeah. and, you know, until, you, and, until they see one amazing performance and they go, oh my God, and yeah. then everybody wants that and then you go, Okay, well guess what? That artist rehearsed for five days yeah. with their dancers, with the band, with the costumes, with everything. It's just unfortunate in one way where it's going because it's, it's happening so fast that people aren't taking the time to actually create, you know, s tailored, tailored pieces for their artists. Yeah. Fortunately, Tina has been passing along her knowledge and experience to up-and-coming choreographers. She's dedicated herself to helping all those aiming to follow in her footsteps in the hopes that choreography can continue forward as a respected art form. On the show, we talk a lot about the new generation of choreographers, and every master that we've had has had the same concerns about the new generation not having any training and just having so many skills that are lacking that you guys have. Um, but you're kind of kind of taking action on that, right? You have a, a new web show that's coming out where you find and develop choreographers. Tell me about your show. Yeah, we're gonna, um, I, I, I want to kind of bring light to some of these choreographers that are, you know, they don't, may not have the upbringing that I had or, some, or 
that bringing that other choreographers have had some training and some understanding of the business. They're just looking at things on TV and like, I want to do that, and they learn it, and they might get picked just because they came up with the new trendy dance or the new fad, but then they have no idea how to handle the business side of it. They have no idea how to hone their skills and what else they should be learning. So on our show, I want to give choreographers that opportunity. I want to find some you know, new blood out there and and hopefully, you know, through a competitive type of thing, we'll find that winner, we'll find that one, and, and we're not quite sure how we're going to do it, but I do want to be able to give back and, and to teach them and to groom them and show them at least what they should be looking for and, and training on their own so that when they are offered an opportunity that they're just not, you know, a hit it and quit it or a, mm -hmm. a you know, one hit wonder where they're just in and out because they got a taste of it and didn't know how to hang on to it. Well, when it all comes down to it, what do you love about dance? Oh gosh, I just think it's, there's nothing like it, you know? And it's, it's such a freedom of expression that you can't explain. It's almost like, you know, a drug in a sense that you, you can't, you can't put a, a name or words to what it feels like to be able to marry your body with sound. I, I know that there are people at home that wish that they could get their body to move a certain way or hear the music. They see it, but they can't hear it. And to have that gift and, and, and or that blessing, I should say, it's like, it's just something that you, you can't put words to. It's just something that you just go. It, you're like, thank, thank you, God. Thank you for this. Wow, that's amazing. Thank you for this, for talking <laughs> with me. That was amazing. Oh, it's my Thank pleasure. you so much, Tina. Thank you. As always, we'd love to hear what you guys think. Make sure you post your comments and questions below. Thanks for watching. See you next time.